Hey guys, Ark here, bringing to you another episode of my Learning Night Elf series. This episode is uh, by request from uh, one of the viewers, um, and it's going to be a little bit different than like a, an in-depth strategy and whatnot. It's going to be focused around items and how they interact with your heroes. Um, so just from a general sense, I mean, I think anyone that plays the game understands how important items can be, um, but they might not understand why you would put certain items on, on certain heroes. Um, and my goal for this video is to try and explain the thought process uh, behind which items go on specific heroes so that you can make your own decisions in game. Um, I'm not going to go in, in depth on each map of what items drop where. Um, if you want to learn that, I'm sure there, uh, there's, there's resources out there. Um, but the easiest way, if, um, from what I found, I guess I'm very comfortable, comfortable working in the world editor. Um, I, I do it that way, or you can go into the, the game itself and just creep around versus a computer. Um, I do that often as well, just to kind of practice my creeping as well. So both options are good, but I'm sure there's resources out there on like War 3 Info or something that might have specifically where you can get it. But a lot of it's just going to come down to experience as well. So just play the game and you'll get the uh, idea of which items drop where. Um, but so, yeah, we're going to stick to explaining um, items and how they interact with your heroes. So what I wanted to start with was just uh, kind of opening up the world editor um, and just showing the items in general. So um, if you look on the left hand side, so this is the object editor and world editor. Um, you don't have to be familiar with working in it. It's just easiest for me to showcase what I'm trying to get around. So there's um, a couple different uh, uh, types of items. I guess you, you'll have your permanent items that you don't have any charges on. You, you can't consume them. Um, they're just always present on your hero, um, whether they're stats, upgrades, or something like crystal ball, which I can just see out of my corner, corner of my eye. Um, so those are just what we call permanent items. The There is also a charged items, or I, I, I often say like consumable items or something like that. Um, that's going to be something like your wand of illusions or your, your um, uh, Murloc's eye. It's not called Sentry Ward. I don't know what it's called. It's called Murloc's eye in, War in World of Warcraft. But <laughs> um, so those are your charged items. They have a set amount of uses that once you use them, they will go away. Um, you have some others that are uh, like power ups. Those are kind of like your Tomb of uh, Agilities, um, Tomb of Intelligence, um, stuff like that. Uh, artifacts, I guess, are you're probably not going to see those except in your uh, um, free for alls or, or more than just one-on-one -on -one games, um, but you can kind of see some of them down there. Purchasable are going to be items that you can buy from your shops, whether it's your Voodoo Lounge, Ancient of Wonders. I think the Merchant also. Uh, yeah, so, so the, the the market, or not, I guess the Marketplace as well, but the um, uh, Goblin Merchant um, as well. So like your Scroll of Protection and whatnot. Um, so that's pretty much uh, the gist of it. So there's different, different types of items. And how that relates to certain maps is that, let's say on Echo Isles, for instance, the green camp to the south of your base, the level three knoll and the two level ones, that's gonna give you a charged item. Um, that's gonna be the Tomb of Int Agility, Tomb of Intel, something like that. But the camp to the north of your base, the two trappers and the um, ogre, that's gonna give you a, uh, I believe it's a level two charged, um, basically like your circle, or not charged, uh, permanent. It's gonna be like your circlet, nobility, um, claws of attack. Um, and so there's different levels um, across it. And so that's where you're gonna get with experience on certain maps, it's gonna have specific uh, levels of items. Um, now, how that impacts, so those are the items, those are the differences between what kind of items and, and how you can tell what camp will drop a specific item. Um, it's because uh, it's a level one charge, level two charge, stuff like that. Um, and that that's how it interacts with the drop table. Jumping on to Night Elf and how those items um, can impact it. So we'll, we'll start with just going through the heroes. So, I mean, obviously we have Demon Hunter, Keeper of the Grove, Priestess of the Moon, Warden. So these are very different heroes. Obviously they play differently. Uh, they have different uh, attributes, uh, primary attributes. Um, and so for instance, Demon Hunter is an agility hero. And when you get something like Slippers of Agility, that's gonna give you plus damage to your attack as well. Um, so Demon Hunter thrives on things that help him fight. Um, 
more, I guess. So like Gloves of Haste will increase his damage output. Slippers will increase his damage output. Circlet gives him increased damage output, health, tankiness, um, all, all, all of the above, I guess. Um, and so typically early game, there's not really a bad item. I guess your two bad items um, oftentimes that you'll see early game in a solo for Demon Hunter is Gauntlets of Strength and uh, Mantle. Those are probably the two worst items um, for him. But your slippers is very good, circlet's very good, claws, gloves, those are all very good items for him. Um, similarly, if you get a um, like Boots of Elven skin or something, that's plus six agility. So that's really good for him. It's a lot more damage, more armor, attack speed, and whatnot. Um, whereas you compare that to the Keeper of the Grove, who is an intel hero, she actually benefits, or he actually benefits from um, the mantle because that's plus damage for him, more mana, more, more spells that uh, he can cast. Um, the Warden, uh, there's, there's a lot of really good items for the Warden, but Warden is very similar to Demon Hunter, although it has it does rely on spells quite a bit. So um, increases to his mana is actually pretty good, um, but so is uh, plus damage to his attack. So Slippers, Claws, those are very good as well, um, but oftentimes later in the game, you're gonna start relying on your mana a lot more. Um, so those items will probably eventually get sold off or transferred to a different hero. Um, Priestess Agility Hero, so again, plus damage is very good for her, uh, plus agility is very good for her, plus attack speed is very good for her. Um, very, so three out of the four heroes are very similar. Um, but one thing that all four heroes share is that plus damage is good, always, because they're going to be doing a lot of damage throughout the game. Um, and it's just they get plus damage from different items. Now, how this impacts on your tier two hero is very important, or if you go for the tri hero like mass archers is very important. Um, so, for instance, if you get a Naga second, Naga is almost always going to be attacking from the back line. So, if you have a demon hunter and a Naga, it's going to almost be always attacking from the back line. So, oftentimes, what you'll see is a demon hunter will transfer over his claws, his gloves, anything for plus damage that would uh, impact the Naga because that Naga is going to be attacking typically more often than the Demon Hunter just because she has a ranged attack. So that's oftentimes what you'll see is, is players transfer over some of these items um, just because of that aspect. Another thing you'll often see is that the TP um, that you get from the beginning of the game will often get transferred over to your Naga or transfer over to your backline hero. And kind of the idea behind that um, is just that you, you generally do get items item slot or six slotted on your demon hunter pretty quickly um, if you keep that TP on there. Um, but another thing is that the demon hunter is on the front line. So the Naga is going to be in the back, typically safer. Um, so if that demon hunter ever gets uh, focused, you want to be able to staff that hero out. But by staffing that hero out, if the TP is on that demon hunter, then you're kind of shit out of luck. You, I mean, you, ha you can't TP out of the fight. You can staff the Demon Hunter by having the TP on the Naga, and that allows you to stay in the fight a little bit longer, potentially stay in the fight entirely for your Demon Hunter to come back, um, or it just gives you another avenue that you can just TP out and still uh, be perfectly fine. So that's kind of the idea, um, swapping it over to the back line. Um, you have that staff for safety. You don't have to be too concerned about your Demon Hunter dying because of that, um, and it just gives you a lot more flexibility in the fights. Um, so from a very high level standpoint, that's that's essentially the items. Um, so you want to keep in mind what gives you plus damage. Um, so depending on the hero you have, what hero benefits the most from plus damage. So for instance, when you get to tier two and you have that Naga, Naga is typically gonna benefit more from plus damage because she's gonna be able to attack from a safer distance and attack more often because she's on the back line and she will attack first. Um, or, what do you prioritize on your hero? So if your Demon Hunter is your frontline, if you have a frontline hero, maybe Gauntlets of Strength or just HP in general is more beneficial for your frontline hero because he's at risk of being nuked or being attacked or targeted. So always just keep in mind, where do you want your hero in the fight? And what does that mean for you? So if your hero is safer, you generally want more attack damage on her or him so that it can be putting out damage while your frontliners are just tanking or, or um, I guess buying time. If, if your hero is gonna be more at risk, that's gonna be something that you typically will want in potions or healing and whatnot. 
on because those are the heroes that are going to need it. Um, so just whenever you guys are in a game, just always think about that. What items, what are the purposes of my heroes? What are the items I need to accomplish those purposes? And from there, as long as you're thinking of that, you may not make the right decision every single time, but more than likely over time, you're going to start making more and more right decisions. So that does it for this episode. Um, hopefully uh, it kind of met the uh, goals of the video. And if you guys have any more questions, just uh, comment down below. Thank you.